see is quite interesting there. Um, you see that China in, um, did increase its iron ore imports quite dramatically in the middle of last year, but they've been tailing off towards uh, you know, the end of the year and into the beginning of this year. And you have to think there might be a little bit of a price issue there. Um, yes, I know there's been some supply-driven uh, price hikes, but you also are starting to see the Chinese looking and thinking, hmm, at iron ore at that price, we're going to try and uh, minimize the amount we're buying. There's also been a switch to higher grades and more uh, premium products such as pellets. So it will be interesting to see if Chinese iron ore demand um, does trend lower in the next few coming months or whether it will remain fairly elevated. Looking at the rest of the world, and that's a much more positive picture, um, I've picked the three biggest iron ore importers uh, beyond China, Japan, South Korea, and Western Europe as a whole. And what you basically see there is you see quite a strong dip um, at the height of the pandemic in the middle of last year, and then a fairly nice recovery towards the end of the year, uh, extending into this year. Um, you have to remember that the rest of the world is still 42% of steel production, so they, um, you know, what that happens with them does matter, and it does seem that they are recovering. Uh, there are numerous ways to connect uh, to us. Uh, uh, one of uh, the, uh, the, the main ways is through the electronic screen. Uh, uh, on average now, the electronic screen market takes up about 20% uh, of the market, uh, uh, the rest being OTC uh, brokered in the future space. Uh, there's very good liquidity and depth uh, in both the, uh, 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 in the second, third and fourth uh, contract months. Uh, that's just a sample of the second contract month I have there. Um, uh, and this is, of course, fully fungible with the OTC uh, or NLT uh, futures. Uh, as mentioned earlier by, by Clyde, there is a growing uh, interest in the higher grade uh, iron ore, uh, and that is also reflected uh, in um, the uh, derivative trade itself, where uh, we cleared uh, something like 40 million tons uh, in 2020 and about over 70 million tons altogether. Um, of course, in the past, I think the market uh, would have used the 62% as uh, the benchmark 62% contract uh, as the uh, as a proxy for 65, but as 65 came into focus, uh, and of course the 65-62 spread um, uh, having its own volatility, uh, it has come into its own as as a product in itself, uh, and there's growing interest in that every day with trades happening every day and. Again. Uh, okay, this will be the downstream, downstream industry. I won't uh, be going into everything, but look at the NEV. NEV is a, a new energy vehicles in China. This will be one of the boosters in China's auto industry. Uh, for a country that you um, selling about 20, 25 million units of auto, it was quite substantial. And China, the next growth model will be focusing on the NEV because it's eco-friendly and then it will be allowing people to trade in the old model for the newer and more eco-friendly uh, models in order to generate enough interest in the auto market. Uh, excavator, another thing, you know, check tr if you have the time to track the excavator numbers, you will notice that the excavator numbers will be a strong indicator to tell you how the construction is progressing, it's progressing quite impressively. 2020 and uh, the first two months of this year, the sales actually was quite robust. Um, small size and medium size, more for the construction and as well as the infrastructure, whereas large size will be for the mining projects. Uh, large size didn't really grow as much because we do have the breakdowns, uh, but I didn't share here. Uh, but bear in mind, this actually is a very close, uh, very nice indicator and a strong indicator that China did inject a lot of money, not only China. For um, Chinese, Chinese steel output, you know, obviously, as I said, and as some of the other speakers have said, we've had a, um, you know, a record year in 2020 driven by some of that infrastructure spending and, and you know, um, a drive to recover from the pandemic. But all of the long term, you know, noises coming out of the country um seem to suggest you know a slowing down in in output and a slowing down in raw material inputs right so you know things like as we'll come on to things like consolidation of steel mills um things like using more recycling and you know one of the big things that we've seen in the last couple of weeks is this target to reduce the steel intensity of economic growth or rather the emissions intensity of economic growth um and all of these things we think will, will start to weigh on iron ore import. Um, 
now in terms of decarbonizing um there's obviously a spectrum of of measures that can be in place in the in the steel industry and and the most obvious is is more recycling so you know relative to other countries um it would appear that china has much more room for recycling steel products and for production via electric arc furnaces um and indeed that has been mandated you know over the last few months we've we've heard targets of you know up to 20 25 percent of steel production you know obviously we, we're getting this question a lot recently um and you know the answer is well rates at the moment are i mean they've dipped off over the last couple of days but they are you know at the kind of levels they were in 2010 or even in some some markets you know pre pre-financial crisis um and in short the, the fundamentals just aren't that good right we've seen we've got some some strong uh volumes of grain we've got some strong volumes of steel cargoes now which actually ties into what i'm just talking about with um you know production in places like china and south korea has been fairly strong but demand or rather production in europe hasn't been able to ramp back up in line with demand or, or at the same goes for the us so you're seeing a lot more steel trade there um and yeah on the whole you know volume volumes are good but they're not as good as they were interesting i think a while ago when i was uh, attending the world steel association webinar we we're talking about the same thing about globalization localization regionalization right a lot of localization, right um to me from china's point of view i realized that china is changing the trade partners for sure <laughs> you can see us used to be the number one right now nowadays is number three or number four right uh, whereas number one, definitely, as I mentioned, ASEAN countries and then European Union, right? So there is, I think, more, forget about the, all this kind of realization, right? I think China is more to find like trade partners that will be mutually beneficial so that the relationship can be sustainable. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're getting more and more questions, you know, not only regionally, but globally as well. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, as far, even as far as Europe, of course, important in the steel making industry and also in the US. So it, it's certainly been a, quite a diverse range of people asking a, a range of very different questions uh, about the, the derivative market, uh, the derivative markets, you know, not only in futures, but in options. There's some very interesting options strategies out there that people are looking at. Um, and and in, in many ways, you know, I think recently the word unprecedented has been used many times, but Certainly, with the iron ore market, it, you know we, we, these are prices we haven't seen since um, what, ten years ago, I think, uh, <clears throat> uh, just under ten years ago. Um, and, and a lot of participants in the market today, I, I, in fact, have never seen these prices. Right? You know, it, it was it was only two years ago that iron ore was drifting along at sixty dollars, and everyone was thinking, you know, <laughs> if it, it, it moved. 10 cents, you know, it was an exciting day, right? And now, of course, it, it was it, a dollar is, uh, is, is nothing to write home about. And, and of course, the curve as well, and people always talk about the, the iron ore curve, uh, the curve is very steeply backward dated here. But even though it's very steeply backward dated, we're still looking at, I mean, it's come down a little now since, since the peak of maybe a week or two ago, but, you know, 20, 2022, 2023 is still very close to the $100 mark.